in the annals of modern music, few figures loom as large or carry the mythic aura of Steve Albini, the pioneering noise rock icon, whose uncompromising approach to recording left an indelible mark on generations of artists, passed away suddenly last week at the age of 61. And as the music world mourned his immense legacy, one voice rose above the rest with a particularly poignant tribute, P.J. Harvey, the acclaimed English singer-songwriter, whose career was forever altered after collaborating with Albini on her 1993 masterwork, Read of Me, did not mince words in expressing the profound impact he had on both her artistry and her life. In a heartfelt statement, Harvey encapsulated the enormity of Albini's influence with a simple yet powerful declaration, meeting Steve Albini and working with him changed the course of my life. It's a sentiment that cuts to the core of Albini's enduring significance, his spirit of mentorship, and the almost spiritual reverence with which Harvey clearly held him. Because in the lore of rock's most brilliant iconoclasts and sonic innovators, few have achieved the legendary status of the man simply known as Albini to his legion of devoted acolytes. Born in Stanford, California but forever associated with the gritty underground music scene of Chicago, Albini first burst into the cultural consciousness as the frontman of the pioneering industrial noise rock outfit Big Black in the 1980s. With their abrasive, confrontational sound and darkly poetic lyricism, Big Black became cult favorites and their seminal albums like Atomizer and Songs About Fucking laid the blueprint for the harsh, uncompromising sonic textures that would become Albini's trademark. But it was in his second act, as an audio engineer and producer, where Albini achieved true mythic status. Pursuing the slick, overproduced conventions of mainstream rock, he pioneered a raw, minimalist approach he dubbed capturing amplitude accurately across space. His ethos, which favored live, room mic recordings over artificial studio trickery, became Albini's signature, a way to strip music down to its primal essence. It was this singular, unvarnished sound that first drew P.J. Harvey into Albini's orbit, as she sought to forge her own revolutionary artistic path in the early 1990s. Having earned widespread acclaim for her 1992 debut dry, the young English singer was eager to work with the noise rock guru after hearing his work with bands like Pixies and Breeders. His sound just sounds like a band, Harvey explained in an interview at the time. He's the only person I know that can record a drum kit and it sounds like you're standing in front of a drum kit. You can feel the sound he records and that is why I wanted to work with him. What followed was a whirlwind two-week session at Albini's preferred haunt of Pacadam Studios, where the unlikely pair channeled their shared ethos of unflinching authenticity into what would become Rid of Me, an album that not only cemented Harvey's status as a generational talent, but also served as a masterclass in Albini's revolutionary production approach. From the primal, blue-soaked fury of Rid of Me and man size to the haunting intimacy of mist and legs, the record crackles with a visceral intensity that seems to defy the very notion of being recorded. It's as if the listener has been transported into the room with Harvey and her band, bearing witness to the raw creative exorcism unfolding before them in real time. In their glowing retrospective review, Rolling Stone hailed the album as marked by flames, praising how Harvey was under the influence of Howlin' Wolf, Tom Waits, and Flannery O'Connor, and her singing, writing, and lead guitar playing coalesced into something marked by flames. The lyrics have lots of licking, moaning, bleeding, stroking, open mouths, and dismembered body parts. The songs spew viscera as they build to a sticky ecstasy. It was a transcendent creative statement that elevated Harvey to the vanguard of the 90 seconds old rock vanguard as she was the first to acknowledge the pivotal role Albini played in unlocking that seismic artistic breakthrough. It sound just sounds like a band, she told MTV at the time. It doesn't sound like it's gone through a recording process or it's coming out of speakers. You can feel the sound he records, and that is why I wanted to work with him, cause all I ever wanted is for us to be recorded and to sound like we do when we're playing together in a room, and that's never happened before. In the decades since their Rid of Me partnership, both Harvey and Albini would go on to solidify their respective legendary statuses. She is one of modern rock's most uncompromising and influential voices, and he is the ultimate sonic guru for any band seeking to capture the rawness of their live sound. 
have been his client list reads like a who's who of alternative and indie rock royalty. From his iconic work on Nirvana's In Utero and the Pixies Sapha Rosa to seminal records with the Breeders, Jawbreaker, The Jesus Lizard, Cloud Nothings, and countless others. His ethos of stripping away artifice and letting the music speak for itself became a clarion call for artists seeking authenticity in an increasingly overproduced musical landscape. But for all his celebrated collaborations, there was something uniquely special about Albini's bond with P.J. Harvey, a kindred spirit who shared his disdain for industry conventions and commitment to raw, unfiltered expression. In her powerful tribute following his passing, she did not hold back in conveying the enormity of his impact. He taught me so much about music and life, Harvey wrote. Steve was a great friend, wise, kind and generous. I am so grateful. It's a sentiment that has been echoed across the music world as countless artists have stepped forward to mourn Albini's passing and pay respects to his towering influence. Superchunk, whose classic Foolish was recorded with Albini, hailed him as a true iconoclast and visionary. Code Orange called him a mythical figure. And Failure, who recorded their debut comfort with Albini, praised his fantastic twisted sense of humor, astoundingly scientific mind, and principled sense of sonic fidelity and philosophical integrity. But perhaps no tribute carried more emotional weight than the words from his former protege P.J. Harvey. Because in many ways, her heartfelt remembrances encapsulate the very essence of what made Albini such a revered figure. A mentor who imparted not just technical knowledge, but a philosophical approach to music and life itself. Meeting Steve Albini and working with him changed the course of my life, she wrote simply. It was a life-altering encounter that unlocked Harvey's full creative potential and set her on a path toward becoming the uncompromising artistic force she remains today. A path that was undoubtedly illuminated by the wise, kind and generous guiding presence of the man who showed her how to capture the sound of truth itself. As the music world continues processing Albini's monumental legacy, his spirit lives on through the countless artists he mentored and inspired to eschew conventions in pursuit of raw authenticity. But for P.J. Harvey, that legacy runs deeper still, a permanent imprint on her very soul, forged during those fateful two weeks in 1993 when a young singer from England crossed paths with the high priest of the noise rock underground. In the years ahead, Harvey's poignant tribute to her friend, mentor and collaborator will surely resonate as the ultimate testament to Albini's profound and lasting impact. Because in the end, that's perhaps the greatest legacy any artist could hope to leave behind, to not just shape the sonic landscape, but to change the entire course of someone's creative life.